Welcome to another episode of The Wireless Way. I'm your host, Chris Whitaker. And as always, you know, I, I genuinely mean this. I say so often, I, if you're listening a lot, you probably think I'm just saying this, but I am genuinely grateful that you're here, that you're listening. I'm grateful to my guests because there would be no wireless way without the guests and the listeners. So thank you. And today's a unique one. You know, uh, I generally have me and a guest. Well, today I have two guests and we were really are doing something. We're, we're kind of breaking some records here at the Wireless Way. We're in studio at the Telerist headquarters in Sandy, Utah, and we have a remote guest, Brett. You know, kind of dialing in, if you will. So, wow, this is this is this is a little different. I'm grateful for it. So, as always, just a reminder. You know, the Wireless Way double entendre. I just like saying that word for some reason. It's like salsa. But double entendre, you know, the wireless way is no strings attached, no judgment, and the way is the path, the journey, and the adventure. And we're gonna we're gonna touch on a lot of that as well as some technology. You know, we'll get around to that. So I got Windstream in the studio and remote. And let's talk, let's meet their team. John, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you. Thanks, Chris. <clears throat> My name is John Schley. I'm uh, been at Windstream now for about eleven years. So wow. A long time to be at one company in the tech industry nowadays. Um, my background is pretty interesting. I kind of came came here in a in a different manner. Um, you know, initially I I was into tech when I was very young. I learned how to code HTML on Notepad. Wow. Uh, learned how to do JavaScript when I was fifteen, and then I decided, you know, I didn't really want to be stuck behind a computer my whole life. Um, I ended up pivoting over and starting my own motorsports and alternative transportation business back in. 2002. And then uh, at about 2007, when the economy kind of took a major collapse, I thought, maybe I should look at this technology stuff again, because everyone needs technology. Everybody that doesn't need motor scooters. <laughs> so uh, that's when I had... Uh, is that what alternative transportation is? Yeah, mo motor scooters, electric bicycles, which are so popular now, weren't okay. as popular. Right. I was thinking ago. horses or uh, hot air balloons. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> I'm glad you clarified. More modern forms of transportation. Okay. Alternative. Yes, yeah. exactly. And uh, and so so when I, when I had to you know shelter my business back when the when we had the major economic downturn, uh, I had uh, was looking for really for something uh, something interesting to do that uh, really continued to uh, you know build my career in something that mattered. Uh, that's when I had approached Paytech at the time and uh, was fortunate enough to get hired there as an account executive back in 2010. Eventually became Windstream and uh, been here ever since. So it's, it's been a, a great journey. Wow, fantastic! Um, so y your first business, you know, your first career was in that transportation. Mm -hmm. um, what made you get into that? Is that something you stumbled into? Family business? I mean, how'd you get there? You know, I it is funny. I I was on a trip in Mexico down in Cancun and a friend and I decided to rent some scooters back when I was 18 years old and um, ended up thinking when I got home, oh, gosh, I really want to get one of these. But me being more of an entrepreneurial mindset, I thought, well, maybe I could get 10 of my friends to buy them and I'll get one for free. So it kind of started like that. And then I opened a brick and mortar store and before we knew it, we were doing over $3 million a year in sales. So, wow. Yeah. See, I tell you, I bet you got a lot of friends in the channel that probably don't know that story, or do they? No, I don't think they do. I don't really share that too often. So, oh, thanks for sharing that, man. <laughs> I mean, that, that's what I love about this show. I I always live every episode learning something new or uh, learning something new about my guests, which is always really cool. Um, Brett, so we have Brett with us. Brett, uh, introduce yourself and tell us about your your background. Hi, my name is Brett Pontiff. I've also been with Windstream about eleven years now. Uh, I am located in Dallas, Texas, and my background is engineering. I came up through the engineering ranks within Windstream, and now, like John, we concentrate on the national partner development and uh, doing things just like this. So, Brett, every engineer I know, I got to ask a few questions. You know, so first off, I mean, were you that kid that was taking apart your radios and VCRs? I mean, did you take things apart to figure out how they worked at an early age, or at what point did you go? I think I could be an engineer. A hundred percent, Chris. I was that kid. I was also that kid that found the science projects in the World Book encyclopedias and built electric motors before I was a teenager, and. Uh, always participated in the science projects and always knew I would be some type of engineer or scientist. 
I thought I was going to be a scientist. Then at some point, I learned that a scientist just wants to do something that's never been done. And an engineer wants to do something profitably. Then I realized I wasn't a scientist. I was actually an engineer. And another uh, trait that I've observed with engineers, you normally, uh, um, when someone asks you what time it is, do you tell them what time it is or do you tell them how to build a watch? You know, I mean, do, 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 do you know the difference what I'm talking about here? I mean, uh, do you feel like yes, sometimes you maybe go really deep into some explanations when there's a simple answer? Uh, I, I, I would naturally want to do the explanation. I no longer do that. I, I choose to be the person who tells you what time it is and not how to build a watch. That's that, that, that's called experience, right, Brett? You've learned that over time. Because because I tell you what, you're hoping I ask you. Oh, by the way, thanks for the time. But how how is a watch made anyway? <laughs> and and that's why we put Brett in front of our partners at all these fantastic seminars we get to attend because he can take the technology that's complex and make it sound simple and easy to sell, which is the key. That that is the key, you know. And so let's let's talk about that technology. You know, uh, there's a saying that technology doesn't move fast until it moves fast, and I believe it takes people like us and and our channel to enable that. You know, we're, we're kind of the grease on the gears. You know, we're pushing the envelope. Where have you seen kind of this? Uh, uh, it's no use you know, paradigm shift or this transition from traditional telecom and connectivity to kind of next gen um, emerging technology stuff that's kind of not your standard telecom. Is there, is there anything you're seeing, you know, on your roadmap uh, that, that partners are finding interesting and can sell today? Absolutely. Um, so, you know, we, we've really focused on the as a service model here at Windstream, you know, our, our goal is to be the nation's largest managed services provider. And we've continued to form some additional strategic alliances to help bolster up that side of the house. You know, I feel like with the advent of remote work, you know, everybody's changing. You know, these businesses don't need these big fiber circuits anymore. They need secure connectivity into their environment. They need to protect their sensitive data. And we've really focused on aligning our portfolio with the current market trends and needs today. So, Brett, what, what say you? I mean, what, what kind of What's the topics of the calls you're having today that maybe you were not having three or five years ago? Uh, leading conversations with security. Uh, it used to be that security was an afterthought, and now uh, security is forefront of the conversation. Anytime a company adds an application or consumes more of an application, like hiring more people, or relocates where an application is stored or where it's used, we have to look at two things, the network and the security and how it supports that application. Uh, so all discussions are a business discussion, right? But within business, there's really only three things. There's technology, there's people, and there's process. Uh, the technology is what we focus on, but it has to support both people and process. That's uh, that's a good. I agree with that 100. percent I mean, you know, we talk a lot about at all of our education sessions that business conversations first, and that leads to the technology, which leads to you know, obviously, I agree with you. you. Can't it's almost irresponsible to have a technology conversation without a cybersecurity element, right? And then it you know it kind of morphs from there into what kind of outcomes are we looking for? You know, what kind of, what's the business outcome? And, you know, what kind of problems are we solving? And then we can get into selecting solutions and and even suppliers. Um, Back to those conversations, Brad, I'm really interested in that because I know, you know, in your world, you know, John and a partner will line up this really cool call. uh, But, you know, and and there's another sales engineering joke I got to tell you real quick. You've probably seen the meme if I'm saying that right, is it me? Yeah, me, I mean, me, you're me, saying it right. Me, me, yeah. me, okay. Uh, yeah, I've heard it different ways, and I, I don't know. Maybe I haven't. But anyway, you know, a cartoon character, you know, a sales guy and an engineer out in the parking lot getting out of the car. And the sales guy looks at the engineer and goes, hey, look, look here's the plan. We're going to go in there. I'm going to crack a joke. You answer the hard questions. I'll make another joke, get the contract signed, and we'll leave. You know, it's almost that simple to a salesperson. So, yeah, I, I'm sure you've had to deal with the, the the fun part of this complicated call setup. But so tell me a little bit more. I mean, what's the what's some of the last mo- more recent conversations you've had with a partner and an end user customer 
around uh, any of the technology that Windstreams are offering. And tell me about that. You know, wh- what was the, the use case and how did that go? Sure. So Windstream has a, a rich portfolio and where we are most successful is when we solve multiple items for a customer. Uh, not only do we provide access, we provide security, we provide the over-the-top functions. We also have a very established managed land practice in which we can do everything on the customer's premise. Now, while you can find people to do that locally, it's more difficult to find a company that does that on a national level and provides uh, a land configuration consistently from coast to coast. Uh, So a lot of our projects start with something as simple as adding a new app, as I indicated, or more recently, a lot of our projects have been in the retail space where they're changing their point of sales. Point of sales requires wireless access. So then the customer must look at the wireless access points, which leads to a land discussion, which leads to an access discussion, which leads to If you're so dependent on this, you should have more than one access to your location. And oh, by the way, how are you going to secure all this? So now a simple add of something new is we must look at the land. We must look at the WAN. We must look at the security. And those are really where Windstream has the most value because we can handle all of those items for a customer. And so not just the applications, but you're right. Even our engineering team mentions that a lot, that – if you're talking about UCAS or CCAS or SD-WAN or, or even cybersecurity, sometimes you go, okay, let's hit the pause button. What's this writing over? You know, what mm-hmm. what is your connectivity? <laughs> uh, that could be a good starting point, right? Well, and specifically, what's the business need? You know, I feel like <clears throat> a lot of customers out there, they, they may have an idea of what they want, but why do they truly want it? What's it truly solving for? What's the driver? Yeah, yeah. And, and being able to get you know a company like Windstream engaged early, you know, if a partner engages us early, we can help dig and dive deeper and uncover those additional opportunities like Brett's talking about to create a, a fully comprehensive solution. And I can think of something specific that this is a recent win that we had had where there was a 12-location restaurant franchise. They're looking to implement a new wireless point-of-sale system so their servers could walk around the restaurants and take orders on iPads. The biggest challenge was we need good connectivity. We can't not have uh, internet access or we won't be able to, one, take orders and process credit cards. They're dead in the water. The partner really didn't have an alternative for uh, a managed Wi-Fi solution. They, they didn't have, have a, a vendor in mind, so they engaged Windstream. Initially, we just came in, wanted to understand, well, why do you need managed Wi-Fi? They explained the situation, and then, then we started having a conversation about redundancy. What happens if you go down? So now we're in an SD-WAN conversation. The, the next thing, next piece was, well, how are you securing this data? And how are you segmenting those networks between a guest and your, um, and your corporate network? The next thing we know, we take a $4,000 managed Wi-Fi deal and turn it into a $22,000 multi-pronged uh, opportunity with SD-WAN, dual access, and Wi-Fi. So it really shows the power of being able to get involved early, truly understand what those business needs are so we can provide sound recommendations. That's right. Because if the partner would have just came to you guys with the request and you just fulfilled the request, you, you would have gotten just a, that, that original uh, request uh, uh, solution, right? The, the managed Wi-Fi. Yeah. So here's a quote. Okay, here you go. It's like, well, we don't want to just throw a quote over the fence and see what happens. We, we really want to understand the why. Right. And, and you know, we talk about that a lot. We've, you know, we've all heard the phrase land and expand. And that's what we're seeing our our top partners here at Tolaris. Are, that's what they're doing. I mean, our I mean, um, our Chairman's Club trip is going on. There are people are traveling today and, and tomorrow, and they're they're going on a Chairman's Club trip. Our top ten, and we just uh, had our, our our President's Club trip uh, in St. Lucia what a couple of months ago, which is where I really got you know I had a very intimate moment with you. We were in a foam party in a pool. I mean, we that, that sounds a lot more intimate than you'd think. That was my first phone party, to be honest. But I was, I was most taken by your excitement and your level of focus on the fact, hey, they got these foam cannons at the pool, guys. You got to come check it out. Remember that? I'd never, I'd never seen anything like that before. I could so, tell. Yeah. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> but I, I, it, was, it was a moment, right? It was yeah. a moment. It was a cool thing. Uh, totally stayed, you know. As you would expect, it was daylight hours, and you know it, it was cool. It, it was, was cool. Fun. It, was it was a, a fun time. time. Yeah, they 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 made it fun. Um, 
Yeah. It, 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 and by the way, that's that's what you get when you're on the wireless way. We go from managed Wi-Fi to phone parties occasionally. And I'm trying to do more of that, actually. Um, so back to the managed Wi-Fi. Let's talk about that a little bit. This is the wireless way. What other use cases or examples? And Brett, I mean, is, is that an area that you also uh, work on is wireless managed Wi-Fi? We, we do. And uh, to answer your question of what other areas, uh, this also comes up in healthcare quite a bit when our managed land is uh, greatly utilized. Uh, within healthcare, they must use the same Wi-Fi system, but because of HIPAA compliance, must keep all the medical records separate from all the different facilities, functions, separate from guest Wi-Fi. And we can do something like that. We can provide a managed land where we can keep it uh, securely separated and federated from the different types of uses of the land. And, and we've really doubled down on the managed Wi-Fi efforts as well. So we've seen so much success with the Cisco Meraki Wi-Fi stack that we've deployed. Uh, we've expanded that to Fortinet as well. So now we, we can provide uh, two, you know, two different varieties of that offer. Um, they're obviously sp more specific about the individual client's needs, but really simplifies it. Fortinet, you have one appliance for your SD-WAN, your security. Um, we can provide managed switches and the managed Wi-Fi. So it really is a full stack. And the best part is with the way that we've designed it is we have a, a, a WeConnect customer portal. So if, if I'm a Windstream customer, I can log into this portal. I can manage my Wi-Fi, my switches, my security cameras, uh, my uh, SD-WAN, my UCAS. It's a single pa single dashboard, and you can you can actually administer it from your phone. So, this is a, a huge game changer for lean IT organizations, for companies that that you know you, they've got a lot of locations spread all across the country. You can easily identify an issue by just looking at that dashboard. Oftentimes, we'll know about that issue before the end customer does, and we're already opening a proactive ticket. So, you mentioned cameras in that comment. I mean, when I think of Windstream, I got I mean that's probably not the first thing I'm going to think of. Tell me a little bit more about that offering and, and, you know, in the portal and, you know, how, how can that be tied in with the other technologies? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so we partnered with uh, Cisco Meraki for the, the camera deployment and it's, uh, they're, they're very, very high end feature packed uh, surveillance system. It actually is, uh, is intelligent. It's got machine learning built into the back end. It will actually provide a heat map and it will track the customers. So if I'm a retail store, I can see, what areas of my store are most trafficked? Where are people spending the most time? This is all in the insights dashboard that you that you, that's through the, the WeConnect portal. So it's a, it's something that's been fantastic for retail, healthcare, uh, manufacturing. It records audio as well. I mean, you can view this from anywhere in the world. And this is a fully managed service. This is just a a monthly recurring charge. So the best part is is when the technology becomes outdated, we know how fast it changes. We can easily just swap out that camera for a newer model. And we've got a variety of different models, where, whether it's uh, indoor cameras, pan, tilt, zoom, outdoor cameras, et cetera. So we really can cover multiple facets, facets of any organization camera God. needs. That's fascinating. I mean, I'm seeing that topic pop up more and more. Cybersecurity, hot. Physical security is, I feel like, becoming just as hot. I mean, because you, 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 you got to secure the network. Um, but you also need to secure your facility, whether it be a store, an office, a data center, a warehouse. And there, there's some, you know, think about uh, just watching the news. It's almost depressing uh, well, you know, how many things can go wrong. Loss prevention is such a hot topic nowadays. I mean, you're looking at stores like Walmart and Nordstrom's pulling, pull, and Target pulling out of states, pulling out of cities because there's so much loss. Yeah. So, you know, even when I had my business, I had security cameras in there. They're obviously much, much older, 20 years of rudimentary. However... I was able to find somebody that was stealing gas caps out of the motor vehicles that we had on our showroom and hold mm -hmm. them. It cost me thousands of dollars because it's still a keyed gas cap. Wow. So, you know, having having that visibility in, in, in your storefront is, is really key nowadays, especially more now than ever. So, Brett, um, from that sales engineering perspective, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to throw you a, a tough one here, maybe not, but. What advice do you have for that technology advisor, you know, that technology consultant that has built their business strictly on just selling connectivity, you know, and, and they realize that they need to evolve and expand into other emerging technologies, whether it be cameras or managed Wi-Fi. I mean, 
are you seeing or what kind of advice would you have for someone that would inspire them to do that? Uh, that is a great question. I actually appreciate you asking me that, Chris. Um, so I like to remind our partners out there that you are the trusted advisor. You are the person that they come to for technology. And maybe you're not as secure or as confident or ex experienced in um, LAN or in security as you are in access or any of the over-the-top things as you are in access. But you do represent everything that's out there to your customer. Uh, similar to a real estate agent, you represent all the technology that's available to your customer in this area today. You don't have to be an expert at the technology. You do have to be uh, the quarterback or the person who arranges the connections. Hey, let me learn of your business needs. Let me learn of what you are seeking. Let me bring you a handful of providers that provide that. Also, I have this great company that has many, many technical resources and architects and engineers. And when we identify the right providers for your potential project, they also have architects and engineers. Let me arrange those conversations so that you can make an informed decision. Um, I often hear that we have selling partners who focus on companies that have limited IT staff. Every company has a limited IT staff. There is no company out there, small, medium, or large, that has an abundance of IT staff and not enough projects. The other thing is those staff, that staff is designed, is managed. They have enough resources to keep what they have. They're not practiced and experienced in shopping for new technology or new solutions. And that is where our selling agents uh, come into play. Again, representing all the providers that are available in your area today. And that's what they need to keep in mind. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's great info. John, what say you? I mean, what have you seen in your travels? You've been to a lot of events across so many brokers uh, and you know, across uh, the industry. What advice do you have? I mean, what are you seeing out there? You know, I, I'd say if, you know, if I was a partner that was really kind of stuck selling access, I, I would make sure that I'm attending these seminars, these events. I mean, there's there's specific security focused events and UCAS focused events and IoT focused events. Mm -hmm. You know, th those are and and they're free of charge to these partners. So I would say if you're not capitalizing on these events, get there, get in, get linked up with the right people like a Brett or others at other organizations that can help open your mind, that can help help uh, you walk walk in hand in hand into an opportunity and feel comfortable. And furthermore, I feel like Tolaris has really been ahead of the curve by developing tools like Solution View. So if I'm, a, if I'm a partner that, and I don't know how to really sell security or what types of questions to ask, I can just load up this easy to use questionnaire tool and go through and, and have a professional conversation to at least get the, the technical requirements to warrant additional conversations. So utilize the tools, utilize the workshops and events out there, and also utilize the channel managers. You know, it's um, just sending in a quote doesn't really give us the full picture. You know, we, we want to get involved early and often. And um, yeah. I'm sure my peers would say the same thing. So. Yeah, I think you're right. And it reminds me uh, in my past life, uh, Sierra Wireless, and I get an email from a partner going, Chris, here's an address. Please quote. And I'm like, wow, okay, uh, $1 million. I mean, I mean, there's so many questions I have. So, you know, I'm making a little tongue-in-cheek there. But, you know, for selling partners, just know with today's emerging technologies, there are so many other touch points and data points needed to properly quote. This is most emerging technologies is not what you call a rate card quote. I mean, it's not like uh, you want 10 gig, a three year contract. It's this much. Uh, it, there's a lot more needed to know. I mean, think about managed Wi Fi and those cameras. It's just like you know, how many square footage, how many access points. Did, uh, did they already have infrastructure installed. I mean, what's the current state today? May, may even require a site survey. So, getting ahead of this. Uh, is helpful. It's always tough, you know, for anybody when you get that call on Friday afternoon going, I got a Monday morning meeting. Can you, you know, put, pull together a quote real quick? And I'm like, well, probably not. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's take a step back here. Let's really understand what's the why. What's the yeah, why? yeah. Well, because, you know, yeah, you could quote something, but what if it's not the right solution? And then everybody's going to be upset on day of install because it's not what they needed. I did want to expand a little bit more about the Wi Fi offerings because I feel like that's a very underutilized piece of a lot of businesses. Um, 
these loyalty programs that a lot of these businesses are putting out there can tie directly into a Windstream managed Wi-Fi. Um, specifically, you can create a splash landing page through our portal that can go in and capture their information. So you can see things like uh, how many times that somebody walks by the business. So you all know your phone's on. A lot of times the Wi-Fi is on. They might not walked in, but you can see how many people are passing by your business in a day. You can see what times a day they're passing by. You can see how long people are connected for and how often they visit your business. Now we can take that and tie that into things like these security cameras and see where are people going in the stores? How long are they staying there? Well, maybe now as a business owner, I can say, well, maybe I need to retool my showroom and put my higher value products in the areas where people frequent more. So it kind of, it gives you a lot more intelligence to make smarter decisions to help capitalize on the additional revenue opportunities that a system like this can provide. What I love about that is it's actionable data. You know, we talked, I mean, so we, we, we've keep, we've gone through uh, industrial, you know, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. And, you know, one thing I love about that, we've been collecting data for years. Sometimes it was on a clipboard with a pen and paper. But now we're collecting digital data. And, you know, I've talked, I've been on calls with uh, manufacturing companies and partners, you know, work with them. And, you know, they're collecting just tons and tons of data, but they don't know what to do with it. They can't make any decisions out of it. So now we're at a phase where companies like Windstream are taking that data and making it actionable, put it on a, a graphical user interface mm -hmm. uh, where now business leaders can make those business decisions based off this data collected. So that's, I mean, so if you're out there listening, I mean, that's, that's so important asking the questions, Hey, what kind of data would you need in your business to make better budgeting or better hiring or better uh, vendor selections? It can, it can go on and on and on. And, you know, this is a short episode but if you even want to know more, I mean, if you want to know more, whether it be your Tler sales engineering team or Brett at Windstream here, I mean, um, make those connections, you know, reach out because there, there's a lot to learn. And, and the more you know, I mean, knowledge is power. Not only is knowledge power, but it's money, it's revenue. It absolutely is. Um, anything else to that? No, you know, I, 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 I think that, uh, you know, there, there's one other item, too, that kind of ties that whole stack together is the cloud managed switches. Um, we've also got remote power reboots too. So, you know, we can tie that entire stack together and everything works seamlessly. Um, and I think that's the big key because, you know, a lot of organizations, you try to hodgepodge together a bunch of different products and components and when something breaks, it's hard to figure out what's going on. We have five advanced solutions, CCAS, UCAS, cloud, cyber, and all things wireless. You guys touch all five? We yes. do. Yes. We do. We should, let, let, let's talk about that. My not peers only, would love it. Not only do we touch all five, we we have options. We have multiple SD WAN platforms. We have multiple UCAS platforms. We have multiple LAN platforms. We have multiple security platforms. We don't have just one product or service. We actually get involved with our engineering staff and design a custom tailored solution for our customer. Um, I love that. Being an engineer, it's important to me to work for a company that is a real engineering shop. Most people think of Windstream as just a carrier. Yes, we have an access business, but we are a real engineering shop. I love that too. I mean, uh, simplicity, I mean, it's, um, it makes it easy. And, you know, thinking to... Our five practice areas at Tolaris, as I mentioned, you know, UCAS, CCAS, cloud, cybersecurity, and, and, and wireless. And, uh, and I kind of put that physical security as a service with cameras in that category. That, that's, uh, that makes a lot of sense, you know, and I would encourage any of our partners. Again, it's almost like the – because Windstream went through a rebranding, what, a couple of years ago? We, we did, yeah. We, we did some rebranding, and we, we, that's where we really did focus on emerging as that managed service provider. You know, we're, we're not just the same access provider. So it's not, it's not the same your grandparents' Windstream anymore. Nope. <laughs> Certainly isn't. <laughs> well, well, I love the direction you guys are going. I mean, you're, you're helping – again, we started this conversation off saying technology doesn't move fast until it moves fast. Well, I feel like it's moving fast, and also – it kind of pains me to see so many of our colleagues and friends in the channel. Some people are just kind of, I hate to say it, maybe missing it. You know, they're just, they're not embracing it or they're not coming along for the ride. Uh, you know, jump in, the water's fine. I mean, there's, there's a lot of technology out there. And, and what's the other saying we say in the channel all the time? If you're not mentioning it to your clients, someone else is. Mm -hmm. so, um, so get on board. Last words, Brett, anything else you want to get out uh, before we wrap up? 
Uh, yes. So you also indicated land and expand, and that is absolutely the greatest way for our selling partners to grow their business, right? I want to mention that it is much easier to sell an additional line item to a customer from a provider that is already providing a service and invoicing them than it is to bring in an entirely new provider to fill a need or have a new service. Uh, and the reason I mention that is you can solve the customer's needs now. And as their business changes and grows and they have new needs for either security or LAN or WAN or wireless, uh, Winstream can provide those services as well. And it's much easier to sell a new line item or a new service to a customer with a provider that they are already utilizing than to bring in a new provider, have it go through uh, the executive staff, the legal, the board of directors in many cases. It is a much shorter sales cycle to sell a new service with an existing provider than it is to bring in a new provider. Doesn't that make sense? Make, makes perfect sense. And I love it. Um, it makes a lot of sense. So um, kind of tying into what Brett had said as well, you know, in terms of the land and expand, we have a, a channel integration program we've been rolling with for the last, you know, five, six years, but we've continued to expand and grow that. And now we don't even really call it channel integration. We're just fully channel integrated. We have account exec, 200 account executives across the country. They're here to work hand in hand with partners. They're to act as an extension of their sales force. They also have access to all of the existing windstream customers that may not have a partner tag to them. They, we may not have a most current relationship with them, but the partners may. So being able to expand on existing business within the windstream portfolio is key. And uh, we really want to leverage those, those relationships with those partners to help us grow our base, but then to also help them put a lot of additional money in their pocket. So, you know, we're, we, we want to have partners engage with their windstream channel managers and the account executives as early and often as possible because they can really help move the needle for a partner's business. And that's true partnership. That's true partnership, making it, making us a win, win, win for everybody. Well, and you guys, I really enjoyed this conversation. I think uh, we've covered a lot in a little bit of time, but there's so much more to talk about, right? So that, uh, be sure to check the show notes. I'll have uh, information on both John and Brett and Windstream in general, you know, some links to check out. I uh, highly encourage you uh, engage either, you know, via your Telaris uh, channel manager, channel team, uh, sales team in your region, or, or reach out direct, you know, via LinkedIn or, or some information I'll have in the show notes. So once again, I really appreciate you guys checking out an episode of the Wireless Way. We'll see you next time.